Hey there, royal watchers and drama lovers. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. It's your friendly neighborhood critic back with some piping hot tea that's about to make Montecito shake. Grab your popcorn and settle in, because we're diving into a story that's got more awkward moments than Harry's last family reunion. So now, our man Mike Tyndall, the royal family's favorite rugby hunk, is sitting there in a Santa hat, wrapped in tinsel like a festive burrito, ready to chat about Christmas plans. Sounds jolly, right? Well, hold on to your figgy pudding, because things are about to get spicier than Meghan's alleged Christmas roast. Now, let's set the scene. It's the first Christmas without Queen Elizabeth II. May she rest in peace. The royal family is gearing up for a holiday season that's bound to be more emotionally charged than one of Meghan's Spotify podcasts. Oh wait, that got cancelled, didn't it? Oops. So there's Mike chatting away on his podcast, the good, the bad, and the rugby, which, let's be honest, could also describe Harry's life choices. He's talking about how this Christmas will have a lot of change and lots of firsts. Gee, Mike, you think? It's almost like losing the matriarch of your family might shake things up a bit. But here's where it gets juicy. James Haskell, Mike's co-host and apparent stirrer of royal pots, decides to throw a Sussex-shaped spanner in the works. He asks if the family will be playing pin the tail on Prince Harry in his absence. I mean, talk about hitting the nail on the head. Or should I say, the tail on the donkey. Now, this is where Mike shows us why he's the real MVP of the royal family. Instead of taking the bait and giving us the tea we're all thirsty for, he goes full poker face. We're talking stiffer than the Queen's guard, folks. He just sits there, probably wondering if he can use that tinsel to gag James. But oh no, James isn't done. He suggests they could use Harry's face on a piñata instead. A piñata, people. Can you imagine? I bet Meghan's already drafting a statement about how piñatas are a symbol of systemic oppression or something. Mike, bless his heart, deflects faster than Harry Dodge's responsibility. He just says he hasn't missed his co-hosts diving around with where they go with stories. Translation, nice try, James, but I'm not touching that Harry-shaped landmine with a 10-foot polo mallet. But wait, it gets better. In a book, Mike's co-written, because apparently everyone in Harry's orbit is an author now, he drops this little gem. Believe it or not, marrying into the royal family was pretty easy for me. They were always nice to me, and I was always nice to them. Simple, really. Oh, Mike, you beautiful, tactful beast. Without naming names, cough, Megan cough, he's basically saying, see, it's not that hard to fit in with the royals. Maybe if you weren't such a drama llama, you'd have an easier time of it. It's like he's giving a masterclass in how to throw shade without ever mentioning the person you're shading. Take notes, Harry and Meghan. This is how you do it with class. And let's talk about that for a second, shall we? Mike Tyndall, former rugby player, man who tackles people for a living, managed to integrate into the royal family without a hitch. Meanwhile, Meghan, former actress who literally pretended to be other people for a living, couldn't hack it, make it make sense. But here's the real kicker. Mike and Zara are tight with Will and Kate. Their kids are besties with the little Cambridges. It's like they're living the life Harry and Meghan could have had if they hadn't decided to throw a tantrum and move to California. Can you imagine the family gatherings? Mike and Will probably sharing a beer and laughing about the good old days. Zara and Kate swapping parenting tips and royal fashion hacks. And where are Harry and Meghan? Oh, that's right. They're in Montecito, probably filming another documentary about how hard their life is. Boo-hoo! It's almost tragic, isn't it? Harry could have been right there with them, part of this tight-knit group, raising his kids alongside his cousins. Instead, he's... What? Hanging out with celebrities who probably can't even point to England on a map? Good job, Harry. Really nailed that one. And let's not forget, Mike's been through his share of scandals. 
Remember when he was caught canoodling with an old flame? But did he run away to America and start spilling royal secrets? Nope. He faced the music, sorted things out with Zara, and got on with it. That's what adults do, Harry. They deal with their problems, they don't write books about them. But you know what really gets me? The stark contrast between Mike and Harry when it comes to loyalty. Mike's out here, dodging questions, keeping family business private. He's not afraid to have a laugh, but he knows where to draw the line. Harry, on the other hand, he's writing tell-all books, giving interviews to Oprah, making Netflix documentaries. It's like he's never heard of the phrase, discretion is the better part of valor. Or maybe he has, and he just decided to do the exact opposite. It's almost like we're watching a real-time demonstration of the difference between class and, well, whatever it is Harry and Meghan are doing. Mike's over here, being a supportive member of the family, while Harry's, what, trying to burn the whole thing down? And let's talk about Meghan for a second. She's been open about how hard it was to adjust to royal life. Well, boo-hoo, princess. Mike managed it, and he comes from a background where tackling people to the ground is a career choice. Maybe if Meghan spent less time trying to modernize the monarchy and more time trying to understand it, she wouldn't have had such a hard time. But no, instead of adapting, instead of trying to fit in, she decided it was easier to play the victim. And Harry, bless his ginger heart, fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Now he's stuck in California, probably wondering why his phone never rings anymore. You know, it's almost funny. Harry always talked about wanting a normal life, about how tough it was being a royal. Well, congratulations, Harry. You've got your wish. You're so normal now, your own family doesn't even want to talk about you anymore. But here's the thing that really gets me. Mike Tyndall, without ever saying a negative word about Harry and Meghan, has managed to show us exactly why they failed. He's loyal, he's discreet, he's supportive of the family. He understands that being part of the royal family is a privilege, not a right. Harry and Meghan, on the other hand, seem to think the world owes them something. They want all the perks of royalty without any of the responsibility. Sorry guys, but that's not how it works. You can't have your royal cake and eat it too. So what's next in this royal drama? Will Harry finally wake up and realize what he's thrown away? Will Meghan's next PR stunt involve trying to out tinsel Mike Tyndall? Or will they just continue on their merry way, convinced that they're the victims in all this? Only time will tell folks, but one thing's for sure, while Mike Tyndall is busy being a stand-up guy and a loving family man, Harry and Meghan are just, well, busy. And I know which one I'd rather be. So there you have it, royal watchers. The tale of two royal in-laws. One rising to the occasion, the other falling from grace. It's like a modern-day Aesop's fable, except the moral of the story is don't be a whiny brat who throws his family under the bus. What do you think? Is Mike Tyndall the real MVP of the royal family? Has Harry made the biggest mistake of his life? And most importantly, how long before Meghan tries to launch her own line of royal-themed tinsel? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. The royal drama train shows no signs of slowing down, and you know I'll be here to break it all down for you. Until next time, this is your friendly neighborhood critic signing off. Keep calm and carry on unless you're Harry and Meghan, in which case, please, for the love of all that's royal, just stop. Seriously, stop.